Good evening. My name is Delia Ramirez, and I'm the Congresswoman from the 3rd Congressional District of Illinois and the first Latina from the Midwest to ever serve in Congress. Tonight, it is my honor to speak with you on behalf of the Working Families Party. The Working Families Party is everyday people coming together to fight for what we all need. No matter your race or where you were born, we all want to earn enough to thrive, not just survive. And we want to leave a better world for future generations. WFP works to elect candidates who take that fight to the halls of power. And every year, a Working Families Democrat takes the opportunity of the State of the Union to share our vision for a government that has our backs. We want our government to represent us, not los riquillos, not the super rich, or the giant corporations. You see, I was born and raised in Chicago. My parents came to this country from Guatemala. My mother crossed the border while she was pregnant with me. And she did that to give her children a fighting chance to escape the poverty she grew up in. My parents worked hard to build a life for us. Factory jobs, home care jobs, selling cosmetics, jewelry, multiple jobs at once. Sometimes back-breaking jobs on a bakery assembly line, 12 or 14 hours, nonstop. They switched shifts so they could alternate taking care of us even when it meant they hardly saw each other. My family made it this far because we are rooted in community. They raised me in church and they taught me the value of hard work, faith, and how to live my faith through social justice. They taught me to believe in an America where everyone can thrive. But after decades of assembly line work, my dad was diagnosed with kidney cancer. Thankfully today he's in remission, but those long hours and the physical demands of having to stand for as long as he had to forced him to retire. And now he can barely afford his Medicare supplemental. My mom, she still works as a home care worker, but she makes so little that she has to get her health care through Medicaid. My parents, they're not alone. Every single year, millions of families face high health care costs that force them to have to choose between rent and medical care. So when I was elected to the Illinois State Legislature, I worked with the Latino Legislative Caucus in Illinois to pass a law guaranteeing health insurance to all Illinoisans, 42 and up, regardless of immigration status. We did that for our own family for immigrant and Latino communities. And now that I'm in Congress, I am here for all working families struggling to make a decent life across this country. I ran for Congress because Washington needs more working class people making decisions. I know the struggles working people face every single day. And it's not because I've read about them. It's because I've lived them too. The working class doesn't look any one way. Some people are struggling to save for college. Others are trying to get by on fixed incomes. Some live in towns with a good job left years ago, and others in big cities where rent or property taxes just keep going up. Some communities are plagued by opioid deaths or gun violence. Some have seen flooding Others have faced droughts or wildfires, lead in water or power outages because of the climate crisis. I wanna tell you, whatever part of the working class you're from, we have plenty in common. And together, we are the majority. Tonight, the president spoke about the state of our union. So let's talk a little bit more about what working people are facing. It's been, really, really difficult. We've lived through years of COVID and many of us lost people we love. Costs went through the roof, from housing to childcare to groceries, and our wages 
they haven't kept up. All while price gouging corporations have made record profits at our expense. We see mass shootings. We see young people facing a mental health crisis. We've seen our rights under attack taken away by an out of control Supreme Court. The Biden administration and Democrats in Congress took important steps. They put money in people's pockets and free COVID vaccines in their arms. The infrastructure bill will build roads and bridges and also infrastructure for clean water and electric vehicles. The Inflation Reduction Act will lower drug prices and make insurance more affordable for millions of seniors. And President Biden uses executive authority to cancel up to $20,000 in student loan debt. Those things will make a difference. But let's be honest, it is still too hard for too many families in this country to make ends meet. Even while oil companies and grocery chains were making record profits, the Republicans want to blame higher prices on workers who got their first raise in a generation. When Democrats controlled the House, we passed President Biden's full Build Back Better plan. And that included funding to make child care and elder care and community colleges more affordable. House Democrats voted to extend the child tax credit, putting $300 a month in the pockets of working parents. Yet every single Republican opposed it. And just enough corporate Democrats joined them to block that bill. What I want to say to President Biden and all my fellow Democrats in Congress is that we have two jobs. We must stand up to the extremism of the MAGA Republicans, and we have to show working people what Democrats will deliver for working families if they put us back in control. And that means we won't give up on those family supporting investments. We came so close to winning. So I'm glad that the president called for reviving the child tax credit and expanding Medicaid and taxing billionaires to pay for it. We, almost, we also must take action right now with the power that we do have. The president can use executive authority to further reduce drug prices. He can stand up protections for renters and hold corporate landlords accountable for the rent price gouging and housing discrimination we are seeing throughout the nation. If Republicans in the majority are as interested in working class families as they claim, then they'll stand with us. But if they don't, Americans will see who's on their side and Republicans will pay the price at the ballot box. Last year, we heard pundits say that we Latinos are much more conservative and we're turning towards the Republicans. But what we saw is that when we talk about the issues affecting people's day-to-day -day lives, like health care, jobs, housing, child care, elder care, clean air, and water, working people hear you, no matter what color they are. When you talk about democracy, immigration reform, our basic freedoms, working people hear you. We can't depend on a party label as the only reason to vote for us. Our job is to hear what working people are telling us and deliver. Take something as simple as the right to stay home when you're sick. Too many workers don't even have that. Last year, Railroad workers demanded the right to just a few paid sick days, and the multi-billion dollar companies rejected their demand. It's an outrage. Everyone gets sick, and everyone deserves sick days. A $7.25 an hour minimum wage was an insult before prices surged. It is past time for a $15 minimum wage and one fair wage at least as we work towards a living wage. Workers at companies like Starbucks and Amazon, they've been organizing unions to demand fair treatment and fair pay. The wealthy executives refuse to negotiate with them and have even fired workers for speaking up on the job. That is wrong. 
every worker deserves a voice and needs protection from retribution when they speak up. Tonight, we are mourning the murder of Tyree Nichols. We thank the Congressional Black Caucus and President Biden for bringing Tyree Nichols' family to Washington. For generations, our country's laws, practices, and resources have enabled police violence in our communities. It is a pattern, not an exception. In 2020, we all watched as Minneapolis police officer murdered George Floyd. Millions took to the streets in grief to demand an end to police brutality, which disproportionately kills and injures black people, especially black men. Congress has failed to pass even the most modest accountability measures to change how police show up in our communities. Tyree's murder is an unspeakable reminder that the demand for justice remains unanswered. We must pen this deadly status quo. We must end qualified immunity. We must invest in ending poverty, uplifting schools, jobs, housing, health care, and strong communities. That's what truly keeps us safe. The Republicans have controlled the House for just a month. And all I've seen from them is a determination to destroy the economic security of families like mine. Take away the precious freedoms that we still have and target some of our bravest champions like Representative Ilhan Omar. Republicans, including Representative Juan Ciscomani, are manufacturing a crisis by threatening to make the government default on its bills. Why do you ask? So they can force cuts to Social Security and Medicare. They are willing to risk economic catastrophe for an extreme agenda that no one voted for. As the President said, Democrats won't let Social Security and Medicare get cut. We also must protect Medicaid SNAP and all the other essential programs. They are literally the reason working class seniors like my parents don't spend their later years in poverty. And we need all congressional Democrats to hold firm against any cuts. We don't need any bipartisan commissions to recommend grand bargains that will make working people poorer. What we should be doing is expanding Social Security and Medicare, not cut them. Let's make it plain. Republicans want to slash health care for working people so that their donors can get another tax cut. But we, we're going to fight like hell to ensure that in the richest country in the history of the world, everyone has good health care. Republicans and their fossil fuel industry backers are furious that Americans are taking climate change seriously. But we, we will keep fighting for clean air, for clean water, lower utility bills, good jobs, and a livable planet. Republicans want to divide people. They want to make us afraid of each other. Trump did everything, everything in his power to spread deadly hate and lies to the American people and to the world. And Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she helped. Trump and Republicans, they're terrified of us. They're terrified of working people standing together for what we all have in common. And 12 million of our neighbors still lack legal status and face deportation when all they want to do is to contribute to their families and to their communities. My husband, Boris, is a dreamer who has lived in the U.S. since the age of 14. He's lived here longer than he lived in Guatemala growing up. And like many others, he has been waiting years, what feels like decades, to finally have a pathway to citizenship. But both Democrats and Republicans have failed them. This is personal for me. I know what it's like to live with that uncertainty and fear. And it is why we must do everything 
in our power to finally pass comprehensive immigration reform. In the meantime, we need the president to extend protections from deportation for all 12 million undocumented community members, and we must provide them access to work permits. Republicans like Sarah Huckabee Sanders want to politicize a humanitarian crisis at the southern border, making Americans fear people who are coming here to escape violence and poverty like my parents did almost 40 years ago. Trump's policies did not stop people from coming here in search of asylum. What they did was make it more deadly. President Biden inherited a broken immigration system. And Republicans in Congress would rather scare voters than work towards a solution. But we must not look away. The president's recent announcement of expanded legal pathways was a positive step. But it can't be at the expense of treating some members of the immigrant community as collateral. We need to end Title 42. We believe the president and the country can do better. America is rooted in the vision that this is a place where people can build a better life. We have to change our laws and we have to dedicate our resources to live up to that vision for people that have been here for generations and for people who want to join us, including refugees and asylum seekers. Republicans want to criminalize abortion. Voters stood up for our reproductive freedoms at the polls and we will show America that we will fight tooth and nail to ensure that families can decide for ourselves when and how to grow without Republican politicians deciding for us. Criminalizing abortion is one more way Republicans are abusing the legal system to attack our basic freedoms, our bodily autonomy, and our democracy. At the same time, Republicans and their backers in the gun lobby show little concern for the national crisis of mass shootings. We need an across the board tightening of gun regulations for the sake of everyone's safety. And that starts with a ban on assault weapons. Republicans want to overturn any election they don't win. But we believe the people should decide not the corporations, not the super PACs, and not the Republican conspiracy theorists. The contrast, they're clear, and the stakes are high. We can stop the right-wing attack on our rights and our democracy. We can win a government that has working people's backs. And I'm not alone in this fight. The people in my neighborhood in Humboldt Park, in Albany Park, in Belmont Cragen, in West Chicago, and across Illinois' third congressional district, and working people around the country are ready to stand up for our families, for our communities, and for the best version of America. In Congress, I have the honor to work with outstanding colleagues who stand with me, including other new working family champions like Becca Ballant from Vermont, Greg Assad and Jasmine Crockett from Texas, Summer Lee from Pennsylvania, and Maxwell Frost from Florida. And we know that we can retake control of the House of Representatives in 2024. What we can't do is do it alone. It takes a movement. It takes working people locking arms to speak up for what we all need. Working families are the majority of this country. Tonight, I urge you to join the Working Families Party. Just text ACT to 30403. That way, we can build a working families majority in our government that will fight for all of us. Now, let's get to work.